Hello, this is Tor from ITCON and this is part 10 in how to set up a cost-effective preventive maintenance system. We have gone through a lot around the PMs. We've gone through the definitions, how it fits into the maintenance system, how to collect data in the field, how to get to the tasks of our PMs, and even the training material uh, for each one of those inspections, the condition monitoring standards. Um, we also looked at how to get them in a database. Now, we, so we have the tasks. I think we've used an AC motor. We had about 11, 12 tasks for that AC motor. Some is gonna be on the run, some is gonna be in the shutdown, but most of it for the electrical motor is gonna be on the run when it's running. So the next step is to use to decide what tools do we need, need for doing our PMs. Um, it's pretty easy. You look at the task and you say, what are the tools we need for each one of the tasks? You're done. So what I'm going to talk to you guys about today is what tools do we need for our general inspection rounds, like an operator mechanic go out and doing a general inspection round. Some of you are thinking, well, Tor, do we really need that? Because we're going to move to remote sensors, we're going to move to um, looking at uh, vibration, temperature, flows, um, electrical readings, amperage, voltage, all that stuff. We're going to look at it remotely, so we're not going to need people going around looking at the plant. I think that is a mistake. I think you're going to need people to go out into plants because there's a lot of failures that we're not going to be able to interpret just remotely. I mean, simple examples. How are you going to find a corroded bolt? How are you going to find a missing pipe hanger? How are you going to find a leak? I mean, we can go on and on. Bad base, foundation. Uh, it's going to be very hard to find. There may be ways you can find a little bit more vibration, but you don't know where it's coming from, right? So we need to go out there and look at equipment and combine that with this powerful technology that we're, we're getting. Now, what are the tools we need for a typical inspection route? So the first thing I would say is a powerful flashlight, not just a regular flashlight, but a really good flashlight infrared thermometer it's just point and shoot as you know these ones are cheap um, they used to be hundreds of bucks but i think you can get something reasonable for about a hundred bucks i like the little fleur one uh, i think that's the only brand that has this uh, all you do is you buy this it's about 200 bucks and you just attach it to your phone and um, you open the FLIR 1 app and you can then take an infrared picture. It's not super accurate, it's not a very high resolution, but it's great for scanning an area. You don't even need to take the picture, you can just kind of scan an area and see if you see hot spots and larger pieces of equipment. Uh, here's an example of a picture I took um, on a electrical motor in a paper mill, but fun, easy to use. It goes The photo goes straight into your photo library, very easy. Um, so we have those tools. What else do we need? We need a stethoscope. I think is really important. Um, a stethoscope. Uh, this is an older version. This is an SPM Instruments. They have these handheld tools. And you just connect your headphones. But by listening, especially to bearings, but you also listen to gearboxes, etc. The more you do that, the more experience you get and you learn to hear differences in sound. And it's uh, really obvious. There are some filters on these. Uh, so you can kind of close out other noise. Um, that was SPM. I think a leak detector is kind of maybe, but I think you might as well bring it. Uh, UE system has this, I think it's called Ultra Pro 100, and it is, you have your headphones, right? And then you have um, this, and it, you have different attachments to this one. So you can do the stethoscope, of course, just by adding this. And you can then also add more like a microphone and you can listen to the surrounding and look, look for leaks, etc. And these guys have very clear filters. You have different settings here. You can listen to different frequencies right back here. So great little tool to have with you. Um, another tool I really think that we need is, of course, so we can look at rotating equipment. So motor fans, um, couplings, etc. We need to have our stroboscope. I like the pocket stroboscope. They're a little bit smaller, so it fits easily in the bag, right? The, um, the um, larger ones are brighter, but takes a lot more room, so it's, you have to weigh that, how much you want to carry around. Um, another thing 
I think is really good to have is a vibration monitor. So you have your vibration spectrum meter with a larger unit and you use typically have a specialist going out checking that. But just for general rounds, I think a vibration pen-ish like this one and this SKF, it's about 1200 bucks. Um, I like better though the bearing checker by SPM. Uh, several reasons. It is about 400 bucks more, so I think this one is about $1,600. This is an older model. They have a newer model now with a with a color screen. But this one will actually see if you have a problem with the bearing. You'll see damage inside the bearing because it has a wider spectrum. And I also like the um, how you take the reading. It has a little spring here, so I know how hard I'm going to push where I measure the bearing. This one, the vibration accelerometer, only you can you can't see if the bearing is actually damaged or not. What you see is if you have the one time like uh, misalignment, unbalance, mechanical looseness. You can see that, but you don't actually see bearing damage with this one. Good to know. Another tool I think you should have is the inspection mirrors. So the inspection mirrors is basically a mirror on a stick. So you can get in and look at things. It's really good also at home if you're messing around with the car engines and so forth. Found this little guy. Uh, it works okay. It's called the Almond. It's 65 bucks currently at Home Depot. And it's a little camera, low resolution camera, but it's a camera and it's on a stick and it connects to your phone with, it has its own little Wi-Fi, connects to your phone. So you can see the picture on your phone and you can go in and look at things. Good for safety, so you don't have to touch things or stretch over equipment, you can look at it. Um, they even have a model which I thought was kind of neat with has a, has a camera and it has a magnet. So a couple of weeks ago when I was repairing my boat engine I, I lost a bolt. Of course it's a specialty bolt, it's hard to find. Um, but it has one with a magnet so you can go in and look for it underneath the motor uh, and you can then find the bolt and uh, pick it up. That's about it for inspection tools for the general inspection routes and of course there's more tools to PMs because you probably want to have your basic toolkit with you, some small tools uh, so you can adjust uh, packings and what, what have you. But these inspection tools are important so it's not just walking by the motor or pump or the gearbox and say oh it's still there, it was a stone last night, it's all good. This gives some measurement points you can add to your to your uh, inspection routes and it gives some uh, technology to actually inspect with a higher accuracy. Hope this helps. Thank you so much for listening and please subscribe and click the little bell so that you can get the notification when we have a new video. We try to have one every week. Thank you.